Hello everybody, thanks for stopping back by Wild Bird Creative. Going to do a quick piece today using a mask. Now all this is, is just a piece of copy paper that I cut an irregular shape out of and I have an 8x10 piece of mixed media paper that we're going to work on. I have my apricot paint that we're going to use. That's going to put down one layer. And then I have my Diva Pink. I hope there's enough left in this. It feels really, really light. But I don't need too much. There we go. That will be fine. Okay, I have a stencil that we're going to use. This is L266 from Stencil Girl Products. But first, we're going to start with a very textured sponge and just get some of these bold colors down. And this just gives me a nice textured background and I'm letting it lighten out naturally. I'm not reloading the sponge. Set that aside pick up the little one here, get some of the apricot on it and go right over. And I'm not trying to make a solid background. This one I'm reloading because it's a lighter color and a smaller sponge. There we go. Set those aside. Now I'm going to take my stencil, lay it right over the top. Let that sit for just a second. I want to make sure that it settles nicely. And let's use... Think. What color would look really, really nice on top of that? Let's go with Portrait Pink. Let me just scooch this up a tiny bit. And this time I'm using a synthetic sponge because I don't want all the texture. I want coverage this time. And I'm just going right on over what I've already done. Now the color will still peek through. This is just to soften it and give it almost an old plaster effect. And the colors work so nicely together. And let me grab just a piece of paper. Here it is. And I'll just lay it on top. Grab my brayer, press down, set that aside, and pick these two up, and there is our base. It is bold and beautiful. Now you can keep this, you can get a lot of uses out of it before it's no good anymore. But there we have a really kind of 60s feel to that with the bold colors. And then I've got papers over here that I want to work with on top of it. Let me just tear a strip of this. This is from 
just a book that I picked up at a book sale. It was falling apart, destined for the garbage heap, and I thought, well, that is just too cool a book to have it just get trashed. So I grabbed it. And I think I want a piece with the music, too. So let's Let's see. Let's get Let's decide how we want these layers to go. There we go. And I think another strip like this, but I'm going to make it smaller because it will go on top. And I'm just laying it out now. That bottom layer is fairly dry, so I'm not too worried. I can pick this up and move it as I want. See? Nothing on the back. Now I'm going to do this again with a glue stick so that we can keep things moving along. I would suggest that you use a stronger adhesive on yours. Now when you go to book sales, see if they have any old sheet music. The papers are just great. They have a nice feel to them. There we go. Trying to decide exactly where I want him, or do I want, you know what, I think I want him to be even thinner now that I look at it. Right like that, there we go. Now this is a super quick project. It takes pretty much no time. You're just going through your scraps. So there we have three layers on top of the paint. And now I have sticky fingers, but that's okay. I think the next thing to do is add a little bit of a deeper color onto this. And I think rubber stamps are going to be the way to go. So, I think I'm going to use purple to get some contrast. And I'm just going to use my itty bitty little script one. Let's put him on here so he's nice and square. I don't know, this came in a set that I got years ago. I don't have any idea who the creator is. Just one of those things that I picked up. That's all I want for that, just on that one. I want this one to stay kind of bold. Let me just clean this off right here on my paper. And I have another great one from Stencil Girl Products, S691. And I'm just going to add a tiny, tiny bit 
using the pink and I'm not even getting more paint. This is going to create just a nice ghost effect. Just breaking up that purple a little bit. Get some up here too. There we go. You can just see just a little bit of detail. Again, adding some more interest. There, set this aside. I have my bin out of sight that has all my wet stuff in it. Now I've got these handmade modern paint markers. Now you do have to shake these a lot to get the ink going, to get the paint going. And then you want to test them to make sure that you're getting a nice solid line of paint. Now I'm going to turn this this way and just create some circles and I'm going to go over them a couple times just so that they end up being a little bit irregular and they're not super bold I don't want them to be super bold. I want them to sink in to what we're making. Now the very last thing is going to be using my potato bag. And I think what I will do for this is bring back my template because I really only want this detail on this part. I don't want it to be fighting too much. Let me get it lined up as best I can. I've got a fold in it which is kind of driving me nuts. There we go. Okay, and I'm going to use gold. Give this a shake. And this one, I want to make sure that I get a nice bit of coverage on the sponge without it being too heavy. I can always go back in and add more, but it is hard to get the paint back up. If you've ever gone in too heavy handed, you know what I mean. Let's see. Oh, we're getting some great sparkle to this. Okay, let me lift it from this corner now. Let's get a little bit down here and through here. Get some more on there. And I'm going to take this away lay this back down and this time I'm going to come in with some purple. And when I do this it doesn't matter if I go outside. I want to break up the edge a little bit just for interest.
I love potato bags. Come over here a little bit. There we go. Set that aside. Wipe my fingers up. I'm going to touch up this one circle again. That's the wrong color. Here's the one I want because I want this guy to be a little bit bluer. And this guy to be a little bit bluer. But they end up as a nice, almost a watercolor effect. And there you have it. That is super duper quick. You've got some glitter in there. You've got some nice bold colors. Now on top of this, you can put a word. I don't know if I'm going to or not. I might, I might while I have you here. Let's look at it, why not? Let's dig through. Dig through my words here. Reimagined. Open the door. I've got fortunes in here and everything. Be challenged. Maybe glowing. I think glowing is what I want. Grab my scissors. Trim this up a little bit. I have found when I work with pieces from magazines, it's better to trim them than to tear them. Let's see. Nope, I don't like it after all. Let's choose a different one. Glowing is not it. Sometimes you think it is, and then you put it down, and it's just not. I think I want something that's a little subtler. I think thoughts is good. Let me brush the edge on purple ink pad. Oops, smudged it. Well, there goes that one. Hmm. It goes this way sometimes. That's okay. I have so many words in here. I can keep digging. No, it's not very interesting for you. But... Ah, here is another one that says thoughts. Now, let me go a little more gently here. There we go. Flip it over. some glue stick on it. And I'm going to grab my art crayon and just come along the edge a little bit here. Give it just a little bit. hard to tell looking at it from this angle if I have it straight, but I think we're good. There you go, folks. Thoughts. I hope you'll take the time to make this very quick piece, and I'd love to see what you've created. You can tag Wild Bird Creative. 
Thanks for stopping by.